Sarah, first of all, what's the mood and scene in the Bahamas in the crypto community? It's great to be here. There's a lot of innovation happening. And I think what's been really interesting is seeing the confluence of uh, crypto entrepreneurs, investors, regulators, traditional finance. Um, so you just see the industry maturing. So talk to us about Zero X. How do you see this company challenging uh, incumbents as big as Coinbase? So as, as you mentioned, um, uh, DeFi is growing and innovation is happening on decentralized exchanges that are peer-to-peer, -peer, right? Um, and the volume over the past year grew much faster on these decentralized exchanges than on centralized exchanges. But then these decentralized um, transactions, they, they bring their challenges. And just like Web2 needed open protocol standards to succeed, like HTTP, so does Web3. And ZeroX is that open, most trusted protocol for the exchange of tokenized value. It's a public good. And ZeroX Labs builds commercial products on top of that public good. Now, where is, you know, it's funny. We used to hate talking about regulation and finance because it was boring. But at the same time, now it is central to the emergence of this ecosystem. Big exchanges are struggling with this. How do DeFi exchanges think about the emerging regulation ahead? Uh, yeah, I can't speak to all of them, um, but what, what I would say, my, my personal opinion is that we're going to get to a point where these rails that support innovation and um, more uh, liquid 24 hour a day exchange um, for lower cost for end users and more accessibility, um, they will be combined with appropriate consumer protections. And what I'd love to see is um, the US federal government take a stance as we have historically, uh, of like a leadership stance around financial innovation, uh, something that has made our economy um, a, a major player in the past with, for example, the rise of electronic trading and work the CFTC has done in the past. You know, what about self moderating a little bit here because you know while DeFi has its promise there's a lot of worry about rug pulls there's a lot of worry about things that could go wrong for consumers and we've seen it a lot over the last year or so so if you're a consumer thinking about DeFi you know how do you look for the right places to go yeah I, I would say um, you're absolutely right I think that there's two sides of this coin or I guess three right you have regulation then you have platforms that can design products, even decentralized products that are um, uh, safer and abuse aware for consumers. And then there's just a huge component of consumer education uh, around this new realm of finance. Now, Sam Bagman fried of FTX had a very spirited take on what's driving crypto investments right now. He said it's FOMO. I'm curious what your take is on that. Is the fear of missing out really um, what's driving all this competition for deals? Uh, I, I think that, um, you know, we at Greylock like to believe, and I have a ton of respect for Sam, we're investors in FTX, but at Greylock, we are trying to make first principles decisions independently about the most important technology platforms of the future. Right. And so we operate in a competitive market and we believe that many of our competitors are smart people. So we pay attention to what they're doing, but we would never invest simply because somebody else thought it was a good idea. Well, it seems like metaverse, the metaverse is the next buzzword and could be the next driver of FOMO. And I'm curious, given, of course, Greylock's, you know, early investments in Facebook, how you're thinking about that and especially the crossover uh, of the metaverse into the world of crypto, DeFi, and all of these big themes we're talking about here. Yeah, we probably think about it from a slightly broader perspective. We made um, two investments recently um, in Magic Eden, which is the fastest growing NFT marketplace around this idea that digital assets um, on Solana, but on any chain are going to become much more important and a part of people's lives. And they're going to have digital environments. Um, we also made an investment in a company called Portals, uh, which is one of the leading uh, metaverse projects. But in both of these cases, we're really focused on understanding you know, what the user demand is. And if that is community creation or uh, a virtual place for social interaction, we're really oriented around that versus speculation. But we definitely think that there's going to be more and more, you know, digital interpersonal interaction. Sarah, you've been at Goldman Sachs before Greylock. You know how this works. What's going to happen in terms of the convergence of traditional finance and DeFi? There's got to be some space where the two combine. 
Yeah, I think that this is going to be a massive boon to the ecosystem as more and more traditional finance players move into the crypto ecosystem. Um, because I think the, the greatest promise of crypto is actually like accessible, trustless markets um, that are more efficient. And the big institutional players, be they hedge funds or banks or market makers, they provide, um, they provide liquidity and efficiency in markets uh, and help them operate better. And so I think that a lot of traditional finance organizations have been waiting for increasing regulatory clarity. But I'm really encouraged that you see uh, firms like Goldman Sachs or Citadel say explicitly we're making moves into crypto and we feel more comfortable about the risks. I think that will make the entire ecosystem uh, more liquid and more mature. Sarah, you're in the Bahamas. A lot of people are there. About 2,000 people are there right now. What's your biggest takeaway? I think it's really what you said, which is we're at a point of, you know, the um, maturity in the ecosystem where the most important thing is actually figuring out how to enable institutions and the next wave of consumers to enter the ecosystem and use the rails of crypto um, in ways that are um, you know, safe and legal. Uh, and I, I'm, I'm really encouraged that there's so much discussion of that at the FTX conference.